Using a mouse to move your character similar to games like League of Legends, Diablo, and RuneScape is really quick and easy to set up in Unity. This video is the first part of a series where we'll be making the basic framework for a character controller similar to these games. As always, the project files will be uploaded online as each episode comes out, so be sure to check that out in the description below. So let's jump into it. First up, in a brand new project, I'm using the Universal Render Pipeline or URP, but you're welcome to use any other render pipeline. I've just created a quick little test scene, it's nothing too fancy, just a few props and small terrain area. All 3D objects used in this project are downloaded from Quotonius.com, which is a great website if you're looking for a wide range of 3D objects to download for free, so be sure to check it out. The first step we'll have to do is install some new packages. I'm using Unity version 2022, any newer or older version should work the same. Go into window on the top nav bar, then into package manager. Make sure to have packages set to Unity registry as we're looking for Unity made packages only. We just need two packages, one named AI Navigation, which will give us an extra functionality with NavMS agents, and the new input system, which will just be under input system. If you can't find these packages, there's a search bar on the top right. Just click the install button on the top right for each, and that should be done. Once our packages have been installed, we can go straight onto setting up our new inputs. Right click our project view to create a new input action, which would be somewhere down the bottom of the list, and name it custom action. When you are naming this, make sure there are no spaces as we'll be referencing this later. Just double click it to open it up, and a new pop-up should show up. Within this, we do not need a control scheme, so just go straight down and create a new action map. I've named mine main, again remember what this is named, and now we can set up some actions. The only action we will need is our mouse click. So create a new action name move. Now we can create and add any keybind you'd like. I'm just gonna add our left mouse button under binding here. Then that's all for our input actions. Just make sure to click save and then we can go into our inspector window and check the toggle which says generate C sharp class and apply. The environment needs a nav mesh surface before we can control our player. I've just added a nav mesh surface component onto the game object that holds the environment props and terrain. If you're using a terrain or floor plane, just place this component on it and click bake. I find this component super handy when dealing with nav meshes over the normal baking method. Now we can move straight onto controlling our player. I've just dragged in the player model from the model pack. All it is is an empty game object with its armature and model inside of it. On the game object, we need a few components, the first being a nav mesh agent. Here we can adjust things like our nav mesh agent speed, which I'll just leave at 3.5. Set the angular speed to zero because we'll be relying on turning through our script. I've set acceleration to a large number as I want movement to be instantaneous. If you'd like your character to slowly accelerate when moving, just adjust this number to something like 10. And the last thing, just make sure to turn off auto braking, which will give us an instant stop when we've reached our point. The next component is an animator, which might be there already if you've dragged in your model. If not, just add it in. Now we need to create an animator controller. So just right click the project view and create an animator controller. And I've just named mine player controller. Within this, it's pretty simple for now, we just need idle as our default state and another name walk. No need to add any transitions. I'll just go into each now and apply our animations which come with the character. With that set, we can go back into our play object and apply our new animator controller and start creating the movement script. For that, just add a new component and name it play controller. Inside of our new script, first thing we need to set up is our new namespaces. So add in the unity engine.input system and .ai namespaces to the top. Now we can set our variables. I'm using constant strings, which just means it can't be changed, which will hold our animations. So we just need one for idle and one for walk for now. Make sure the values are equal to what we set in the animator controller. Now a reference to our input action script, which we created, I've named mine custom actions. So I'll just give it a type of this name. Then a reference to our nav mesh agent and animator. And lastly, I'm going to use a header for this section just to organize it a little and reference a particle system named click effect, a layer list named clickable layers, which will contain a list of all the layers we can click onto, and the look rotation speed, which I'll default to eight. Set up a new awake method, and we'll need to get reference to our animator and nav mesh agent components. Next, we need to set our input to a new instance of our custom actions, then call a method named assign inputs. This will be our new area where we will apply all our input functions. Add the method and simply enough, add a callback. By accessing the main action map, then our move action and adding a result if performed. If it is performed, then our click to move method will be called. In this method, it'll simply call a raycast or an invisible line from our camera to the point of a world our cursor is at and move our character there. So define a reference to a raycast hit named hit. Then we can cast our raycast using physics.raycast. Our origin will be our main camera's screen point to ray with an input of 
of our mouse position and the result of our rate cast will be our hit variable. I'll just default the distance to something like 100 and pass through our clickable layers, only hitting these layers. Because we only want to call the action if we hit something, we'll make this ray cast into an if statement and set our agent.destination to the hit point and instantiate our click effect at our hit point plus a small amount above the ground. And before we forget, we have to set up two new methods on enable and on disable and just enable and disable our custom input accordingly. Otherwise, it will not pick up our new input. Okay, now we can test it out and we have a character which will move around to the location but we just need to rotate it and set our animations. Don't worry about our particle effect not showing up yet, we'll make it at the end. Go back into the script and create a new update method. In this, we can define two new methods, one named face target and another named set animations. We'll firstly define our face target method and all it is doing is getting the direction from our player to our destination, applying this to a quaternion or a rotation, then applying this rotation smoothly through our quaternion.slurp function. This is where the look rotation speed comes into play and it will adjust how fast we turn or adjust to our proper rotation. And next is the set animations method, which will just check if the player is moving through its velocity, then define our idle and walk animations appropriately. Now that's all for our script. We can save and close it. Now the controller is working perfectly, but the camera is not following our player. This is an easy fix. So go into your main camera and create a new script named camera controller. In this new script, we just need three references, the transform of our target, the smooth speed which will control the speed in which the camera will smoothly move to the target's position, and an offset. We only need an update method which will start off with checking if the target is null. If so, it'll stop anything from playing after this. If it isn't null, then we need a vector free desired position and we'll set it as the target position plus the offset. Now a smooth position which we use vector3.lerp to smoothly transition our position to the target position. Then we can set our final position to the smooth position. Save and close our script. I've matched my offset to that of my camera position. So negative five on the Y and negative four on the X. And it's all up and running. Give it a play test and it should all be working smoothly. With that all done now, we can go back and create a quick particle effect, which will be used for our click effect. Right click our game hierarchy, go to the effects and create a new particle system. I want it to be short and snappy, so I set the duration to one. Turn off looping, set the start lifetime to something like 0.4 and zero for the speed. The size can be adjustable, but I'll just set it to two. Now in emission, we can set our rate over time to zero and just create a small burst of one particle. We don't need our shape component, so we can disable that and go on down to our size over lifetime now and just select the curve that starts at the top and get smaller over time. Now to finish off, go down to the renderer and change the render mode to horizontal billboard and set our material as following. For my material, I've just set a simple circle with the center missing and you can use this or anything you like and that's all done. Now just drag this into our scene view and it's now a prefab. Back to our player, we can now assign our click particle effect and adjust my clickable layers. I want to only hit the terrain, so we'll make a new layer named terrain, assign this to our terrain or floor object, and that's it. You can now click anywhere on the terrain and move our player smoothly to the location. And that's all for the first episode. In the next episode, we'll create an enemy and make our player attack it. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please subscribe and like the video. You can also find me on my Discord server and other social media to support my content.